Hi everyone, my name is Dave and welcome to Extra Credit, a video series where we take an unscripted look at topics related to local history and exploring that history. All right, so before we get into today's episode, as we normally do, I just want to encourage you, first of all, to visit my website. There is a link in the description. There's all kinds of content uh, on my website related to the topics that we cover in this video series, as well as uh, things that we cover in my explorations. Uh, as well, please follow me on social media. Uh, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Instagram, and again, you'll find links to those in the description. And finally, please make sure that you hit the subscribe button. Uh, there's all kinds of content uh, that goes up on on this page that sometimes takes a while uh, to get onto social media. So by subscribing and hitting that notification button, uh, you'll get that content much faster. All right, so today's episode is uh, actually kind of interesting. Uh, today is a question and answer episode. And the reason why I decided to do this uh, was uh, a lot to do with the, uh, with the weather. Um, now you're probably thinking, uh, you know, what does the weather have to do with kind of today's episode? Well, we're kind of um, behind the ball a little bit, if you want to call it that. Um, the weather as of late, and I've kind of mentioned this in some previous episodes, the weather of late hasn't been great. Uh, we're pretty far behind uh, in terms of where we should be um, with regard to spring. Uh, it is the middle of April, and it kind of looks a lot like the middle of winter. Um I'm going to show you some uh, pictures uh, of what it looked like this time last year. So this time last year, we were actually already out hiking. Um, not so much this year. Uh, it's going to be at least a couple of weeks before I can get out hiking. Um, and so you'll see the comparison between that last year and this year. And I'll also show you kind of a little shot sort of looking out uh, here towards the lake. And you can see that we still have quite a bit of snow. Again, uh, where we are here is we're in a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a snow belt. Uh, and so there is a little bit more snow than uh, in some other places. Um, but uh, it, it still is very unusually high for this time of year. So um, I had planned on uh, doing um, a, a different sort of topic for today's video, but um, with the amount of snow that we have on the ground, I can't get it, really get out and do it because it's kind of, there's a little bit of a field work component to it. Um, so um, as I said, we're going to be doing a little bit of a question and answer episode. Uh, and so what I've done is I've sort of put together a, a few little questions uh, that sort of relate to some of the uh, explorations we do uh, related to sort of this video series and uh, we'll sort of take a look at those questions uh, and then hopefully try to answer some very commonly asked questions that I get. All right, so the first question that I'm going to talk a little bit about is location. Um, I've gotten sort of this question before. Uh, you've probably kind of noticed a little bit sort of about the background. Uh, I think I've mentioned in a previous episode kind of where I do these, uh, um, where I do these episodes. Uh, so I just wanted to elaborate on it a little bit more. Um, so basically, um, I live in the city of Thunder Bay. Uh, some of you may know where that's located. Uh, Thunder Bay is a city in Ontario, specifically in the northwestern part of Ontario. We're kind of on the northwestern shore of Lake Superior. Um, the city has a population of just under about 110,000 people. Uh, I've lived here all my life. Um, I was sort of born in, and raised in, in Thunder Bay. Um, not really, uh, I sort of did contemplate at times kind of potentially relocating, but uh, that sort of never sort of uh, was in the cards. And then uh, I got a job here and sort of established roots and things like that uh, in the uh, in the community. Uh, so yes, I do live in the city of Thunder Bay, but we're actually sort of northeast uh, of the city of Thunder Bay. And I've mentioned before, this is for me, this is camp. Um, and uh, if you're not from this part of the country is part of Canada. Uh, you may not know what camp is. Um, most people, when they hear the word camp, they think of camping where, you know, you're basically going in the outdoors and you're going to go sleep in a tent. Uh, camp here in Northwestern Ontario basically refers to what a lot of people know as a cottage or a cabin, depending on, you know, sort of where you're located geographically. I know um, our fellow Ontarians, uh, people in the southern part of the province will call it a cottage. Um, uh, 
nobody around here uses that term. It's always camp uh, is what it's basically referred to as. Uh, I know there's other places. Um, I know if you go kind of go out west, um, people will call it a cabin. I know places in the States, they will call it a cabin. So um, this is basically kind of like a summer home, uh, if you want to call it that. Um, this um, place actually belonged to my wife's parents um, and they built it as sort of their retirement home. So this is this is basically, um, this is a little bit more um, upscale than what some people would consider a camp. Um, you know, some people, when they sort of think of a camp or a cabin, they think of something a little bit more rustic, maybe something a little bit more seasonal, something that people basically would uh, use more in the sort of latter part of spring, summer, and into fall type of thing. Um, this is actually built as a, as a house. Um, and so essentially we have a basement, uh, we have heating, uh, we have a well. Uh, and so essentially you could live out here uh, year round, uh, which I would love to do. Um, my wife, not so much. Um, but, uh, but, but basically this was supposed to be my in-laws sort of retirement home. And, um, you know, we kind of inherited it. Uh, that from them. So um, where I am right now is about, uh, it's it's about 60 kilometers from my house. Uh, and so it's about a 45 minute, 50 minute drive uh, from where I live in Thunder Bay. Um, so it's kind of one of those, you know, it's out there, but it's not terribly uh, out there. Um, we're actually in an organized area here. So we're in the, what is known as the municipality of Shunya, uh, which is basically one of the adjacent municipalities to the, uh, to the city of Thunder Bay. So we're kind of in an organized, uh, area. Uh, this part of Shunya is kind of, uh, I believe is known as the, um, township of McTavish. Uh, I believe, uh, I'll have to double check that on a map. Maybe I'll put that up there uh, once I double check that. But basically there's two parts to Shunya. There's McGregor uh, and then there's uh, McTavish townships, obviously very sort of Scottish uh, names to that. Uh, so anyway, this is where uh, basically I filmed the episodes. Uh, in the wintertime, we basically film them inside and then you'll notice the summer episodes. Uh, we film them out either down by the dock, uh, by the lake or up on the deck here, um, you know, just sort of wherever it's kind of convenient or, or conducive to, uh, to film the, uh, film the episodes. So that's basically where, uh, these, uh, these are being filmed. I love being out here. Um, again, I would love it more if there wasn't uh, a whole ton of snow out here as you, uh, as you already saw. Um, but hopefully that thaw is coming and, uh, we'll be able to, uh, get out and about a little bit more, uh, in the coming weeks. All right, so this next question is basically tied in uh, a little bit with kind of where we are in terms of our location. Uh, I actually got this question uh, uh, several years ago. Somebody asked me, um, you know, essentially how far I drive uh, when I'm doing these, uh, these explorations. And uh, since that time, uh, I actually decided I was going to um, make more of a kind of a note uh, of how much I was driving and how far I was actually hiking on my explorations. And, um, you know, so since then I've been sort of tracking this in, in typical fashion. I'm, you know, sort of, um, how do I want to word this? Um, you know, um, I, I'm probably a little bit on the, uh, on the spectrum. I think most people are to some extent or the other. Um, I'm very sort of fastidious with, with certain things. So I, I basically have a spreadsheet. I started a spreadsheet uh, where I record the dates of my hikes. Um, I work, basically record where I've gone to, uh, how far I bike um, on the main part of the hike. Uh, and then if there's any sort of additional uh, walking or biking that I do. Uh, and then I basically record how, how far that I've sort of driven. Uh, and then I record, um, you know, um, the, the data regarding the, uh, the, the video that I've shot on there. Um, and, uh, again, might seem a little bit on the, on the sort of on the compulsive side, but what's interesting about it is it's given me sort of uh, a little bit of an insight into, um, you know, some of the, um, you know, kilometers that I've logged, uh, on some of these journeys and, and, uh, um, you know, how much video, uh, I've, I've sort of put out. 
and um, you know, just to give you a little side note. So this is this is some statistics. Sorry, I have to glance down here because I actually I can't remember these things off the top of my head. So these are statistics from last year. So from 2021. Uh, so in total, uh, last year in 2021, uh, I biked uh, 300 and almost well almost 356 kilometers uh, on my explorations, which is a uh, quite a quite a distance now you know you if you're talking about people who bike all the time well you mean people can bike 356 kilometers you know in a you know less than a week you mean people go out for 50 mile rides well you mean all the time but I mean these are not uh the purpose of this is not to go out and bike the purpose of this is to go out and do you know these these explorations and you I mean I'm not just biking you know there's you know um, how I do my explorations um, and, and I've sort of talked a little bit about this in some of the videos and actually you're going to see in an upcoming episode um, we're going to build on that so I've done hiking and biking before uh, and we're going to do a second part to hiking and biking where I'm actually going to record the episode and so you can actually kind of see what goes on uh, in these explorations but so when I'm doing these 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 hikes you I mean I, I'm usually going outbound in one direction and while I'm doing that I'm stopping because I'm gathering GPS data I'm taking pictures I'm recording pieces of the video and then when I'm coming back uh, I basically have the camera on the top of my head and I'm recording the uh, the, the, the video right so um, you know typically when I do my explorations I try to limit um, you know my um, my hikes to anywhere between three to five miles one way right so I'm not doing a whole ton of um, you know, biking at one time. So, you know, 356 kilometers is quite a bit over the course of a year. Now, additionally to that, um, on top of the 356 kilometers, uh, I walked and I biked uh, an additional 179 kilometers. Uh, what does that mean? Well, basically, uh, this involves things like if I've done any type of um, sort of what I call reconnaissance, uh, or if you know, um, I, you know, I did spend some time in the military, and um, um, the proper uh, abbreviation here in Canada, which we we use the British abbreviation, is called doing a recce. Um, so if I've done any type of sort of scouting, um, and, and sometimes I'll do that, I'll go to a location and I'll kind of scope it out ahead of time before I actually go there just to sort of see things. Um, you know, in the fall time, I will kind of go out for walks with Luna or I'll do a little bit of hunting with my, uh, with my boys. So uh, I did sort of walk and bike an additional 179 kilometers uh, on top of the 356. Now, um, part of all of this is actually, you know, getting to these locations uh, to hike. Now, there are some parts of, for example, the Kinghorn line that are, you know, very, very close uh, to where I am here. Um, probably the closest place uh, is um, just up ahead in, uh, in Pearl, a place called Pearl. Um, Basically, that's it's about a ten-minute drive away. Um, some places are much further, uh, where you know you're driving for two, two and a half hours to get there. So I'm talking about places like Jellico. Jellico is about a two-hour drive. Geraldton is about a two and a half-hour drive to get to. Um, and then, so what I've done is I, I record my mileage, and I'm, uh, as part of that calculation, I record how far it is to get out here to camp. And then back home so i include that in because you I mean i'm not going directly from home so last year i drove a grand total of twelve thousand one hundred and seventy six kilometers so just coming to camp and then doing my hikes um you know i i drove quite a bit uh that is quite a bit of kilometers i did put quite a bit of miles uh on my uh on my vehicle um you know, uh, obviously there's a bit of wear and tear that sort of goes on in, you know, into that. Um, tires, I just had to replace my uh, my brakes uh, on my vehicle uh, and put new plugs and wires uh, in the uh, in the engine. So yeah, there's a little bit of wear and tear that goes into that. Now, in terms of the, uh, the video, and we actually just did, the previous episode was on videography, and I will be doing another episode about video. Um, but again, what I do is record uh, the number of um, episodes that are generated, so individual videos that are generated by my hikes, uh, the amount of, um, uh, the size of the data files that are generated and the number of minutes 
uh, of video that represents. So last year, um, my hikes put together uh, 133 separate videos. Right? That's that's a lot of videos. Uh, I actually put them up on my um, obviously on my YouTube channel, like uh, these videos are. Uh, but they also um, you know put them on my um, Facebook account. And uh, so this year I started in November and I basically put five videos a week and um, I'm just going to be wrapping up at the end of April here, um, the last of the episodes and I'm not even going to get through the ball. I think I have about seven or eight episodes that I'm not going to get to this year because once I get into May, I can hopefully start hiking and I won't have as much time to kind of fiddle around with that type of stuff. But so that is a lot of videos. So those videos uh, amounted to um, 1.487 terabytes of data, right? So terabytes. So that is a ridiculous amount of data. Uh, that is a ridiculous amount of storage space that I'm taking up on YouTube servers. Uh, and those videos uh, amounted to 1600 minutes uh, of video. Um, and so again, when you're, you know, you're talking about, um, you know, and that doesn't include these episodes, uh, that includes just talking about these exploration episodes that I'm doing, uh, you know, 1600 minutes of video is hours and hours and hours of video trying to chronicle, um, the, uh, the Kinghorn rail line. Um, so yeah, so I drive a lot and I put together a lot of videos, uh, as a result of these explorations. All right. So um, this is a question that I've kind of gotten before and it's kind of created a little bit of confusion. So um, I just finished talking about the fact that my latest project is I've been sort of exploring um, the um, what used to be the, uh, the Kinghorn rail line uh, here in Northwestern Ontario. But if you look at this channel, if you look at all my social media accounts, um, they have something on there called the Port Arthur Duluth and Western Railway. And so people kind of, you know, get confused a little bit about what I'm sort of talking about. Um, so essentially, um, the um, where this all kind of started, and uh, I think it was, was it last week that I was talking about video? I couldn't remember when I started my YouTube channel. I actually created this channel back in 2006. So the channel's been around for quite a number of years. Um, so essentially, uh, if you've watched previous episodes, and I'll sort of put a link to this, um, that basically my um, interest in local history and a lot of these sort of railway explorations began with the Port Arthur Duluth and Western Railway. Uh, and that began back in the early 90s. And, and so this is where it all sort of started from um, with this sort of Port Arthur Duluth and Western Railway sort of branding uh, of everything. And um, so for many, many years, uh, I basically explored that rail line. And then uh, probably about three or four years ago, I began sort of branching out and started exploring, um, you know, some of the, the other abandoned rail lines. And, and probably even before that, um, I started uh, looking at topics sort of related to that. So, uh, for example, um, I have a book that I'm trying to finish, uh, which has been delayed as a result of COVID. Uh, but the book is on a local lumber company known as the Pigeon River Lumber Company. Now, how I got into that is um, basically the Pigeon River. Uh, if you don't know the geography of this area, the Pigeon River basically forms part of the boundary uh, between the province of Ontario and the state of Minnesota. Um, and so the Pigeon River Lumber Company was actually created in Wisconsin, um, but basically was headquartered uh, here in Thunder Bay, or the city of Port Arthur at the time. And um, obviously they were logging along the Pigeon River, but they also had a logging operation further to the west at Gunflint Lake. And uh, in order to access that timber, they actually built a logging rail line from the Port Arthur Duluth and Western into Minnesota. And so that's how I kind of got uh, interested into, uh, into that. Uh, and so basically the book is almost completely done. There's just a few little things that I have left to do. Uh, two big things really. Um, I, I need to kind of do a little bit more uh, sort of field work, if you want to call it that, um, in Minnesota. And uh, obviously there's been some challenges getting across the border uh, in recent years. Uh, and I'm hoping to finish that off. I, I mean, 
Uh, I could kind of do that this year, but I've since I've kind of immersed myself in this sort of Kinghorn rail project, um, I kind of want to finish some of that first before I kind of jump back into um, the uh, um, the book stuff. And so I probably won't go back to that um, uh, until next spring, uh, so a year from now. Um, and um, you know, uh, part of that issue has been trying to get some assistance from the U.S. Forest Service. To, uh, to sort of complete that because the, the land in which this field work needs to be done is federal land and um, I don't really have the knowledge and the authority to kind of go rooting around in some of those places. So uh, anyway, um, uh, I do have uh, the, the, this book that I'm working on that's kind of related to that, uh, that's related to that topic. Um, and, and so again, I've been kind of branching out in, into a lot of other areas, but um, you know, I had all of these sort of pre-existing things. I had the YouTube channel, I have the Facebook page, I have uh, Twitter, I have Instagram that are all kind of branded as that. And um, instead of trying to sort of create new things, um, what I did was I just basically used those sort of as a jumping board to try to incorporate uh, some of the other aspects of history. Now, as I said, it does create a little bit, conf little bit of confusion because for example, I'll post some videos of the Kinghorn and people are like, did that rail line reach uh, Duluth? And I'm like, oh, it's a different, different rail line. <laughs> We're talking about apples and oranges here. So yeah, it does create a little bit of, of, uh, of confusion. It does create a little bit of mess here and there. Um, but again, um, you know, again, it's just trying to incorporate all of this history into sort of one thing. Um, and, um, you know, again, um, you know, just sort of using that one entity as a way of kind of incorporating a lot of other different parts of uh, different parts of history. Now, keeping along those lines, um, one of the other questions that sometimes pops up, um, and you'll notice on these videos, and if you watch some of my exploration videos, um, you'll see um, my little sort of moniker. Uh, you'll see something about Angry Irish Productions. Um, it's not a real company. <laughs> um, that is just sort of the, uh, the, the title that I use uh, when I make these uh, videos to sort of, you know, make it appear that they're all sort of professional. Um, so where that actually came from is it actually came from my work. Um, so um, if I haven't mentioned before, I am a high school history teacher. Um, here in Thunder Bay. Uh, I've been doing this for a long period of time. Actually, this year, uh, 2022, uh, marks the 25th anniversary uh, of uh, the beginning of my uh, teaching career. So I've been at this a very, very long period of time, uh, which is good, but also kind of a little bit scary uh, at the same time. And so anyway, um, um, where I teach, uh, the school that I teach at is actually the school that I uh, I went to in high school, uh, so I teach at the same high school I attended, uh, which is St. Patrick High School, um, and um, the nickname of the school is uh, the St. Patrick Saints. Uh, sometimes, um, uh, to kind of spice it up a little bit, we call it the Fighting Saints, kind of, um, you know, sort of modeling it a little bit after the whole, you know, Notre Dame sort of firing, fighting Irish type of thing. Um, and so um, one of the things that I do there is I coach football. Uh, and I've basically been coaching football ever since I started um, teaching at the school back in 1999. Um, and so um, along the way, uh, probably around about 2006-ish, somewhere around that point, I actually started kind of making little highlight videos uh, of our... Um, our football games, um, you know, sort of little season recaps and things like that, that I would post uh, on this channel, uh, on uh, things like uh, social media and things like that. And um, again, to sort of make it, you know, sort of appear a little professional, uh, I began sort of uh, calling it Angry Irish Productions, kind of playing off of the whole sort of fighting saint type of thing. And it just sort of snowballed from there. And I just kept sort of using it. And um, it sort of became my kind of little uh, way of sort of identifying things that I 
sort of put together. Um, you know, um, obviously doing the sort of recording and doing the video editing and things like that. So again, uh, that's the logo that you'll basically see at the beginning of this little video. Uh, and uh, basically um, you'll see it uh, at the bottom corner of the, uh, of the video as well. Again, it's not a real company. Uh, it's just sort of my made up sort of fictitious way of, you know, saying this is the stuff that I sort of put together. All right, uh, last but not least, um, final question, and, I, and I've gotten this one from time to time, and it's very ironic. Uh, you can't see her on camera, but um, I wonder if I can kind of get her up a little bit here. Oh, there she is. You can see the top of her head. She's having a nice little snooze beside me. Um, so sort of, and she's literally like right on top of me. Um, I'm probably a little bit off center of the camera a little bit throughout this episode because I can't kind of move over properly because she, like she's literally right on top of me. So Luna is uh, right beside me. So my uh, usual um, hiking partner here, um, uh, she's usually attached to me most of the time. Um, and so one of the questions that I get all the time uh, with, uh, with Luna is a lot of people will ask what breed of dog uh, is Luna, uh, because sometimes she's kind of a little bit hard to kind of identify. Uh, so Luna uh, is, she's four years old. Uh, her birthday is coming up um, in a couple of weeks, uh, um, May the 4th. Um, um, we didn't know exactly when her birthday was, uh, and we knew it was kind of um, right at the beginning of May. Um, and so my kids uh, picked May the 4th, uh, because some of you may know, May the 4th uh, is Star Wars Day. May the 4th be with you. So they picked May the 4th as uh, as Luna's birthday. Um, anyway, so she's going to be four years old and she is a Labradoodle. Uh, so basically she is a mix between a Labrador Retriever and a Poodle. Uh, her dad was a Chocolate Lab and her mom was a Poodle. Uh, and the reason why we ended up with, uh, with Luna is because uh, our previous dog, uh, Loki, and we've talked about Loki in, in previous episodes. Uh, Loki was a great dog. Uh, he was a golden retriever and we loved Loki and everything but uh the big problem with Loki was that he shed like crazy because he obviously was very poofy uh being a golden retriever so when we were looking at getting a new dog my wife wanted to get something that shed less so she thought that you know getting a lap you know she had read that labradoodles were great because basically um you know the the mix of breeds um they tend to shed less well yes and no, <laughs> uh, is the answer to that question. So, um, you know, Loki tended to shed a lot, uh, in general, but he also tended to shed a lot on you. Like, you know, he would rub up against you and end up fur all over you. Luna doesn't do that, but Luna sheds a lot. Uh, and the reason being is she's a first generation labradoodle. Um, so she still has a lot of lab in her. And so she does shed like crazy. Um, basically, um, here at camp and at home, you'll find sort of the tumbleweeds of fur uh, kind of rolling around. Um, and so if she had been sort of a subsequent generation uh, of Labradoodle, uh, as they kind of, um, as you continue to kind of breed them with poodles, um, the hair kind of gets curlier and curlier and uh, they shed less and less. Um, so when you sort of look at her, you will, you basically will see, um, uh, a lot of lab in her still, uh, obviously the color, her, her fur is kind of a little bit on the kind of curly side, but it's not quite poodless, poodle-ish, uh, still has a lot of the, uh, um, the lab sort of characteristics in her. Um, we will be doing another episode, um, with Luna in it. Um, so I did last summer, I did do a episode on companions and I will be doing, uh, an episode, a second episode on companions this summer, uh, with a little bit of a twist in it. I'm not going to tell you what's kind of going on in that episode, but please make sure that you look out for that. So anyway, um, yeah, so, uh, you know, I, I'll be out walking or people will comment on the videos and, you know, what kind of dog is that? And then I'll get all kinds of, you know, I'm not a dog expert, uh, but I'll get all kinds of, uh, you know, pfft speaking of the shedding, uh, as I get hair all over the place, I'll get all kinds of things, you know, is she, is she this type of dog or is this your dog, this type of breed of dog? And some of the ones I've never even heard of before. Um, but, uh, you know, when I tell them, uh, you know, she's a labradoodle, then they're all like, okay, that makes sense. Uh, so anyway, hopefully that answers, uh, the question regarding, uh, Luna's breed. 
All right, so hopefully you've enjoyed today's uh, episode. Uh, again, uh, I'm really hoping and praying uh, that the weather gets better uh, and so we can start doing some of our explorations and we can start doing some of these episodes outside. Um, you know, it's also got to warm up. Uh, it is not particularly warm today. Uh, it's about minus four, which uh, normally it's supposed to be about eight or nine degrees above zero. Um, so we're way, way below zero at the uh, way below normal uh, at this time of year. Uh, and so we will be back with more episodes. Uh, I will be doing another one of these Q&A uh, episodes in the future. Uh, so if you do have questions, uh, please make sure uh, that you let me know, put them in the comments. Uh, you can message them to me. You can email them to me. Uh, again, all those links uh, that you can find in the, uh, in the description here for the video to get in touch with me. Uh, and so if you do have questions regarding some of the topics related to uh, local history or things that we talk about or things that we do explore, please make sure you pass those along and I can put together another one of these question and answer episodes. Anyway, um, thanks for tuning in. Um, again, we're going to be back next month uh, with an episode, again, hopefully uh, outside so we can kind of show you a little bit more of uh, area history. Uh, so in the meantime, uh, stay safe and take care.